Hi, I'm Joe Connolly to introduce you to the chief executive officer of a famous New York City institution, the 92nd Street Y. Our guest is Seth Pinsky, who led the 92nd Street Y to have a global audience during the pandemic by doing so many virtual online presentations and their participation rates and viewership just exploded because of using this new technology. So we want to find, Neil Caruso, the producer and I, want to find out for you what Seth has learned at the 92nd Street Y that you may be able to apply to your nonprofit or to your business. Seth, what an accomplishment you did. You're being praised in the media for the way that the 92nd Street Y went global during the pandemic. How did it go and what did you learn? Well, for us, uh, March 13th of 2020 was a traumatic day because as a community and cultural center, our business really was about face-to-face -face interaction. Um, and uh, when the call came out that uh, organizations such as ours and indeed the whole city were gonna be required to shut down in response to the pandemic, um, it really could have been the end for us. Uh, but we made a very conscious decision uh, at that time that we weren't going to go into hibernation, that we were gonna remain active and we were gonna to continue to provide services to our community. And so what we did over the course of a weekend was we threw together all of our programs and we decided to take them online, which is something that we had done a little bit, but not really at scale before. And in the course of uh, the year after the, the pandemic hit and, uh, and we were forced to close our door, doors, we ended up uh, producing about 1,700 online original programs um, that attracted almost 5 million views, which just to give you a sense, um, compares to about 300,000 people who usually walk through our doors in an average year for our programming. And not only did we increase our viewership and the attendance uh, in our programs um, by an order of magnitude, uh, but those people didn't just come from the Upper East Side or from Manhattan or the New York metropolitan area. They came from all 50 states and over 200 countries around the world. Now, give us those numbers again so they can sink into us. You did 1,700 online events, that, right? That's correct, yep. And they were watched in person and online by what kinds of numbers did you say? Well, actually, this was these were exclusively online. There were 1,700 online events, and they ranged from classical music performances to lectures and discussions to dance performances to classes. Um, and they were viewed uh, over almost 5 million times. Um, and again, from by people from all 50 states and over 200 countries around the world. And suddenly we realized that we were no longer just a New York institution, we were a truly global institution. That is amazing. I can imagine business owners and nonprofit leaders right now asking this question, how did you get the word out to all those new viewers to attract them, Seth? Well, you know, it, it was interesting because at first we did struggle and we found that some of our programming didn't do as well as we had hoped it, that it would. Um, but what happened over time was that we began to understand what the competitive environment was. And we saw in particular that when an organization like ours goes online, we're competing with thousands and probably millions of YouTube videos. And many of those YouTube videos are very well produced and have really high quality talent participating in them. And what we found was that the trick to competing with YouTube was to create a sense of community, to increase interactivity, to make sure that people felt that the person that they were watching was in some way responding to them or at least to the audience writ large. Um, and the way I like to describe it is that we went from uh, competing with YouTube with videos that talked to our audience to eventually finding our own version of these videos by creating programming that spoke with our audience. And that really was, I think, the key to our success. Well, one little word, right? But that's it. Instead of talking to people, 
talking with them means sharing a specific interest? What does with as opposed to to mean? Well, it, it really works on multiple levels and it obviously depends on the program. But for example, giving audience members online the opportunity to speak to a celebrity that they wouldn't otherwise have the chance to speak to, or if they themselves don't get to speak to that to celebrity to hear other people in the audience like them have uh, the conversation and ask a question. It also means that um, we increasingly try to, in our classes to allow the students in the classes to interact with one another and to feel like they weren't just in an online classroom, but they were in an online campus. And that distinction, again, was really critical from our perspective. Fascinating. Neil? You know, that interaction is so important. I think it's, you know, part of Joe's success with the business breakfast that we do and now virtual. I wonder what are people um, finding the, the topic that, that they want to see more of? I mean, not just the interaction, but what's in demand in terms of subject matter? You know, it's really interesting. If, if you had asked me that question at the beginning of this, I probably would have given you an entirely different answer than I'm about to give you. But the answer really is that um, people are looking for that sense of community. People are looking for other people with common interests. Um, and the, the range of classes and programs that can be successful is, is almost unlimited. Um, we've seen incredible success uh, with having celebrities come on our virtual stage um, and present uh, their points of view and their experiences. That doesn't surprise me. Um, we've seen musicians come on our stage and uh, have audiences react um, to, to that and be moved by that experience. That also doesn't surprise me. We've had painting classes. We've had discussions about jewelry making. Uh, we've had music lessons. Um, and, and really uh, the full gamut of all of the programming that we offer. And, and people have responded to almost all of it. What's been the response from the businesses um, that are sponsoring uh, these events? So what, what do they gain from it? And how do you um, support them uh, in, your, in your programming? Well, interestingly, some of our programming um, has um, direct sponsorship and certainly uh, when uh, that's the case, we acknowledge that sponsorship um, and are very grateful for it. And I think the businesses appreciate being associated with the programming that we're producing. But also a lot of our programming is um, supported by ticket sales and tuition payments um, by the people who are participating. And this was another really important realization that we had, which is that we're a not-for-profit and we don't produce the content that we produce with the intention of making money. But like any not-for-profit, we have to make sure that over time we can cover our expenses. And so the idea of creating content and just giving it away was something that over the long run we realized wouldn't be sustainable. And so in some cases we started to put our programming behind a paywall and amazingly what we found was that our audience was willing to pay for the content. In fact, during that year that I was just describing a couple of minutes ago, uh, we ended up selling about 100,000 seats and, and um, uh, tickets to our programming um, to people from all over the world. And what was most amazing about that was that about 60% of the people who bought those tickets or those seats um, in our programs were people who had never done anything before with the 92nd Street Y and came from outside of the New York metropolitan area. And these are virtual uh, uh, seats or seats at the Y? Virtual still. Correct. And now that we're reopening our building um, and, and we're fully open and, and all of our programming is back in person, our intention is to keep this virtual element active um, and, in fact, to try to expand it over time. Um, and we really think that the future for us and, and for many other cultural institutions will be a hybrid future, one in which you continue to have that face to face interaction, which you know, is, is a type of interaction that really can't be matched um, online, but where you also have the opportunity to interface with people online from all over the world and to find that community, that global community of people who share your interests and passions. Just two questions to wrap up, Seth. I want to hear more about how you found these people in other countries and in other states. Did you advertise on Google? Did you... How, how through word of, through advertising, 
did you get them to come? So some of it is um, through word of mouth. There is a large community of ex New Yorkers um, all around the world who have a connection to New York institutions like the 92nd Street Y. And they were able to find us. And I can't tell you how many notes we got from people saying, we we're thrilled to find your events online. We missed the 92nd Street Y so much. And now we have an opportunity to reconnect with it. Um, but some of it also was through um, standard marketing, um, sending out emails, um, trying to find people on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube and elsewhere who had interests that were similar to the programming that we were producing. And it was the combination of those things that, that really led to our success. Topics then, You're right. You, you went to the audience interested in the topics. And finally, what advice do you have for other nonprofits or for smaller, medium-sized businesses that want to do more to expand their reach online, Seth? I guess I would say uh, a couple of things. One is um, that I think that the, the opportunity that the digital world presents to not-for-profits and small businesses is enormous. Um, you think about the market that we're in here in New York, which feels very large at eight and a half million people or 19 million people in the metropolitan region, but that dwarfs in, compared, uh, in comparison to the billions of people who are online and who can become potential patrons when you go online. So that's number one. I, I think that um, digital is, is something that really everyone needs to be thinking very seriously about. And the second thing that I would say is that to be successful, um, I think every business needs to find its own formula. Um, and that means listening to what other people have done and observing what has been successful for other businesses, but then being willing to make, to, to undertake experiments um, and in the process to make mistakes because even when things don't work, you're learning lessons. And eventually over time, the more you do these things and the more you find out that works and doesn't work, the better you can hone your strategy and the more likely you are to find the success that you're looking for. But do they have to buy lights? And it sounds like you must have multiple cameras on these shows. What do they need, you, you know, to do a to do a good job? Well, it, it's it's that's actually a really interesting point because early in the pandemic, everything was very much DIY. Um, people setting up iPads or phones in their homes um, and pressing record and not really paying attention to what the background was. And as the pandemic went on and more organizations um, went in this direction, the expectations certainly did get higher. Um, but I don't think that um, every production necessarily has to be top, top quality, the equivalent of what you would find on a you know finely produced TV show. Um, I think really it's the combination of a, a level of quality that's high enough that um, it's not distracting to people. Um, but again, it's those extra intangible elements like the creation of community that when added to that are what I think pull audiences in and, and over time keep them. Seth, it's great to talk to you. Seth spoke at a WCBS Business Breakfast in Mawa, New Jersey some years ago. So before I let you go, Seth, Will you speak to another WCBS Business <laughs> Breakfast and talk about virtual events and expanding your marketing? Absolutely. And in fact, if it's in Mawa, that would be even better because that's where my wife is from. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very you much. You. Seth Pinsky, it's always very interesting to talk to you. And congratulations everything you've done on everything you've done at the 92nd Street Y. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.